I'm going to do another barrel threading video. We've got a Ruger 1022 here. This is an older 1022. I got it pretty much for free. Uh, it was in pretty bad shape when I got it. It was rusted, had rust on the barrel, and the receiver here, the finish was wearing off really bad. So I went ahead and just polished it up. The front sight was damaged, so I took it off. Rear sight's been removed to clear that scope there with those low profile uh, rings. And then the stock was messed up back here. So I cut a piece of wood out and uh, fixed it on there and I made it removable. So, uh, so my son can shoot it. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing taken apart so we can get this barrel in a vise. The threads I'm gonna use are half by 28 and I'm using uh, I'm gonna use an annular cutter from cncwarrior.com, just like I did on my SKS uh, barrel threading video. Let's go ahead and get this thing set up in the vise. And I'm actually I decided not to cut the barrel at all. I'm just gonna use my uh, annular cutter here to actually remove the old front sight base. I was going to cut it down, but instead of cutting it down and having to uh, reface the barrel, I just decided to go ahead and uh, use the barrel face that's already on there and just use my annular cutter to cut all this off here. So it's not going to hurt it at all. The annular cutter is capable of cutting barrel diameters up to, I think, 0.820. And uh, this only goes out to about, let me, well, let's find out. Let's see. 0. 0.720. So we should have more than enough uh, cutting face here on the tool to get rid of this whole entire sight base. I'm going to do some more measuring real quick, and then we'll get started. Okay, we're ready to start uh, cutting the barrel OD down. Got my little barrel prep for surgery here. We're gonna do some work. So you're gonna need two different types of oil to do this. I'm gonna use uh, some motor oil. It's not Zippo fluid, this is motor oil for the inside of the barrel. And then we're gonna use cutting oil on the actual tool itself. So the motor oil is, we're gonna put it inside the barrel and on the pilot here. And that is going to keep the friction away um, from the inside of the barrel and then uh, the cutting oil is going to go on the cutting surface and the outside of the barrel to help keep the tool nice and cool so we get a good nice cut and don't damage our tool make it last as long as possible um, so the last time I did this I used uh, a drill the whole entire time I'm gonna see if it's any easier or any better to uh, start it with a hand tool here. It may be a little bit easier, uh, I'm not really sure. But since I don't have a lot of guide in here, you know, I have a little bit of side to side movement. So I'm gonna see, uh, see how that helps, we'll, we'll find out. First I'm gonna start by lubing up the inside of this barrel really good. And then lube up my pilot really well. Get oil all over it. Want to make sure you wipe off any motor oil from the outside because motor oil is going to inhibit your cutting. We'll use our cutting oil for that. This tool is extremely sharp. Um, you really don't want to put a lot of downward pressure on it. Just kind of let it do its thing. See how it works. You can really control the, the speed and everything a lot nicer when you do it by hand. I also want to get a perfect depth on my cut here because I want to leave a specific shoulder 
depending on what suppressor or what muzzle device you're going to use, it's going to warrant a different type of uh, a different size shoulder. So you need to look up a look up a threading guide or look up the guide um, for whatever kind of muzzle device you're going to be using to determine what kind of shoulder you need. Already got a really nice outside cut here. It's looking really great. Just cleaning these chips off every once in a while. Making sure everything stays lubricated inside and out. Don't want to wear out our expensive tool here. These tools can be used many, many times as long as you take good care of them, especially doing things like this by hand. It's going to prolong the life of your tools. So we're looking for uh, a thread depth of, or a total depth cut around half an inch. And our uh, thread length is probably going to be, I think I am going to go with 0.478. So it's going to leave me a small shoulder to index my muzzle device. Okay, take a look. We've got our uh, our barrel turned down to 0 .050, and uh, we're ready to go ahead and start threading after I get this thing cleaned up. Let's get all these chips out of the way. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use my little apron here. Yeah, there we go. Check that out. Super smooth looking, if I do say so myself. Yeah, don't do that. Awesome, look at that. Man, that looks really, really good. Super smooth and we got a good shelf. You can see I did not end up cutting the barrel. So we have what's left from our uh, front sight there. Sorry about the wonky camera angle. Yeah, we got what's left of our front sight here at the back, and we've got this turned down 0 0.050. Super nice. Awesome, awesome annular cutter from the guys at CNC Warrior. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with the threads. So, a bunch of companies make these thread starters, and these things are brilliant. They're awesome. They go down in the bore of the gun, and they give you uh, a perfect concentric outside thread for you to get started um, with your die here. So, really, really neat the way that it works. And we're going to start with that side there. So I'm just threading the die onto the starter. I'm going to thread it on a good bit. What you don't want to do is thread the starter on all the way so that shelf is flush with the face here. You do not want the, fit, the shelf of the starter to touch uh, your muzzle at all. You're going to have some major issues. Strip the threads out you just made. You want to make sure what you're working on is level. It is. I'm gonna barely put downward pressure. I'm not gonna go backwards and break the chip until we get about a thread started. There we go. Do a quarter turn and go back, or even an eighth of a turn and go back. Break that chip off. Last thing you want to do is bind up your tool. Now 
There we go. Now we're starting to get our first thread bite in there. Took a minute to kind of turn the outside of the barrel down. More cutting oil all over this thing. Putting a good bit of downward pressure on here. Just finished the threads here. Got the perfect shoulder that I was wanting. So let's take a look at it. Get this thing all cleaned off so you can see it really well. Check it out. Sorry about the shaky camera. There it is. So we got, we cut the barrel OD down 0 0.050 and we cut that. And then I threaded down uh, 0 0.0478. So we have a shoulder, we have a flat face here. And then I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but we have a, uh, a shoulder from the threads to the uh, flat face here. And that's going to be for uh, indexing, you know, different kind of muzzle devices. Some of them index on the muzzle. Some of them index here back on the barrel side. So we got some super nice threads here. And we still retained our factory crown on top since we didn't cut the barrel. But um, yeah, this is all stuff that you can do at home. And it'll cost you about 100 to 120 bucks if you don't have any of the tools at all. 120 bucks is the most that, uh, let me think, let me tally it up. Yeah, I think about $120 to thread this barrel yourself. Now you can buy a threaded barrel um, for around 200, maybe a little bit less if you hunt around. I've already got the tools because I've threaded several different barrel types. So it really didn't cost me anything to do this. My tools have already paid for themselves. There we go, threading a 1022 barrel at home without even cutting the barrel. So one of the biggest things that people worry about is uh, cutting the barrel and getting it uh, true, you know, like facing the barrel. So by, do it, by using the an annular cutter, we did not even have to face the barrel. We were able to use the original uh, barrel face here, put some threads on it. I'm going to go ahead and put this rifle back together. I'll uh, take it out and shoot it tomorrow or Wednesday. And... Uh, See how it goes. If you have any questions about anything you saw in the video, maybe you want some more explanation on it, feel free to post in the comments or also check me out on Facebook. Um, if you have, you know, some more in-depth questions, and I'll definitely help you out with this project. Thanks for watching.